seconds away on Studio 5. You give to me. This Grammy Award-winning artist is warming up for a live performance, and then... Sitting down with reverse order for a look at how their music is pushing to end bullying. Plus, we're headed to Paisley Park. He spoke of God and the Love Sexy album and what it meant to him, and it changed my life. Where fans are traveling from far and wide to pay respect to a music icon. Studio 5 starts now. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, a familiar tune and music video from today's Studio 5 guest, Grammy Award winning singer Myron Butler. Welcome to the show. He'll perform live for us in studio in just a bit, and he is sitting down for an interview. But before we get to that, it's been a busy week in the world of entertainment news, so let's jump right in with a look at your top five from Studio 5. At number five, a rapper turned author. You know that ain't gonna stop nothing. I mean, Lord forbid, I might follow some. Grammy winning hip hop artist Lecrae releases a new book titled Unashamed. The story of adversity and faith shares the artist's journey from drug dealer to believer after finding freedom in Christ. Number four, U2 frontman Bono joins Eugene Peterson to talk about the book of Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd. The hope is the short documentary will encourage more people to spend time in God's word. At number three, boxing champ Manny Pacquiao shows love to the ISIS-affiliated group plotting to kidnap him and his family. The outspoken Christian was told of the threat from the Muslim terrorist organization in the Philippines. His response, simply, I love them. At number two, Amy Grant's mainstream hit, Baby Baby, turns 25. This chart-topping song hit the top 10 in 10 different countries at the same time. Grant is celebrating the milestone with a remake of the tune with Tori Kelly, creating a multi-generational collaboration. Finally, to number one. NFL star and vocal Christian Benjamin Watson responds to the controversial North Carolina bathroom bill. In his Facebook post, Watson stressed he would favor the law, saying, I'm not in favor of any legislation to spite or demean others. However, I am in favor of legislation that governs human activity in a way that will be pleasing to the Lord. And those are your top five from Studio 5. Now we turn our attention to Myron Butler. The Grammy award-winning artist is a singer, songwriter, producer, choir director, and now an author. His new book is called Born Identity, and his new project is called On Purpose. That's his professional life, but Myron is being transparent and sharing more of his personal life this week in our Studio 5 interview. Our cameras rolled as Myron Butler rehearsed for his Studio 5 performance. This man isn't just a Grammy award-winning artist. He's a worship leader at Bishop T.D. Jakes's Potter's House Church. He's an author and a loving husband and father of three. For him, that's his most important role. It's all about priorities, and I realize that I'm called to my family first, and that if I forsake my family, then I'm not a minister as God has called me to be. And it really kind of resonates more for me because I grew up in a single parent home. Mm -hmm. I really didn't, we, we didn't have the mom, dad, sibling families. Mm -hmm. So for me, I kind of guard that, you know, fiercely. So for me, when I cut it off, it's off and I'll deal with it tomorrow. It's family time. You mentioned you grew up in a single family home. Yes. I did as well. What was the dad situation? The dad situation was non-existent, you know, and uh, my mom was really, you know, this is going to veer off into a very transparent moment, but my mom really, you know, wasn't very descriptive or communicative about their relationship mm -hmm. and about what that was. I was just like, uh, he's not here, so, okay, life goes on. And I have to be very honest, it created a hole. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
I can remember, I can't remember what year it was, but we were on, I was on the New Nation tour with Kirk Franklin, mm -hmm. and the tour went to Tampa, Florida, and Tampa's about 30 minutes from the town that I was uh, born in, mm -hmm. and interestingly enough, one of my childhood friends, her mom had started dating him, and she was like, I think my mom, and it just, it was, oh. it was very weird, <laughs> but because I had never seen him, mm. never, and so for me, there was a part of me that just, I want to know what the other side of me looks like. And so I saw him and I had that part satisfied. I, you know, we talked a little bit and uh, that was it. And so for me, uh, it, it further propels me to be there the more for my children. Absolutely. And uh, another very transparent uh, moment, I was taking my kids to school one morning. And my, my son, I have two girls and, and my son is in the middle. And uh, he asked me, he was like, Dad, this was driving them to school one morning. He says, Dad, why wasn't your dad there? And it arrested me. Mm. And I said, well, son, he just didn't want to be there. And it just, it, all of the emotion that you could imagine just wells up. Mm -hmm. And so for me, you know, for me, that's what calls me not to try to right any wrong that he did, mm -hmm. but the generational curse stops here. And certainly, Sorry, Jennifer. No, I, I, I totally relate. <laughs> I got the arresting moment when I was taking my son to buy a soccer ball when he was five. And as we're walking wow. in through the door, he says, where was your dad to buy you a soccer oh, ball? They now, ask it at the most. Uh, mm, <laughs> not here, not now. This right. is Target. There are right. people around. I don't right. want to deal with this. Right. So, yeah, I've, I've been there. Yes. I've, I have been there. Yes. Now, I read that you started playing piano at eight. It actually started earlier than that. I would literally, in church, I would pull up a chair next to the organ player, and I would sit there during church and just watch the organ player. Sunday after Sunday. I was drawn to it. Mm. And so for me, uh, my grandmother, uh, they got money together and got me a little piano. And I started playing the piano. I took lessons for probably about a year after I got it. But I started, it was just, there was an inward drive and an inward pulling me to the music. So you just recorded your first album, was it 17? Mm, my, my first song. Your first song my first 17. Song. Tell my, me about that. My, my first song was with the DFW Mass Choir. Mm -hmm. And I was actually a tenor in the DFW Mass Choir. And we would have something called New Music Mondays. And New Music Mondays was, was where they would allow songwriters in the choir or in the community to come and teach songs to the choir, you know, in consideration for the next album. And so I was like, well, I got a song. <laughs> and so I go up one Monday and teach the song. And uh, it goes over really well. Uh, and then I go to the back of the church, you know, for the rest of the rehearsal. And one of the directors comes up and says, you got talent. I want to take you up under my wing. Mm. That was Kirk Franklin. He's still my mentor, big brother, friend. What was the name of that song? Lift Him Up. Lift Him Up. Lift Him Up. Is that this one? Let me see. I think you're coming up. Uh, yeah, oh. here we go. Okay, we have to stop. <laughs> we have to stop. Social media, YouTube. See. Thanks a lot. I thought I had found every VCR tape of that recording and <laughs> destroyed, destroyed it. it. <laughs> but it's still there. What would you tell that 17-year-old today? Oh, what would I tell him? Don't lose your drive. Mm -hmm. Don't lose your drive. Uh, because that's what I tell uh, songwriters and artists that come up to me for, for advice. And... The, not, not the ministry part, but the business side of what we do is brutal. It is brutal and it can, if you let it, it can, it can wear you down. Mm -hmm. It can make you feel like you don't have anything significant to contribute. Mm -hmm. And when God gifted you with that ability before the foundation of the world, there was a purpose that he gave it to you for. And that's not tied to anything, any record, any anything. Mm -hmm. It was so that you can go and bring glory to his name through the medium of music and song or whatever it is. Myron is resting up his vocal cords and warming them up at the same time. He's taking the stage to sing his latest tune right here in Studio 5. Also ahead on Studio 5. They perform on the America's Got Talent stage and they're now here in Studio 5 to showcase music with a message. 
And we are back. It is time to hear Myron Butler do what he does best. He's here performing the song Best Praise. Myron Butler, take it away. God gave us his best in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave his all for us. So in return, we have to give the Lord our best, best praise. Hallelujah. Put your hands together right there with me. Yes. It's a little simple song that we sing. I want you to catch it and sing it along with us. Simply says it like this. Say, Lord, you're faithful, consistent in every way. Brand new mercy you give to me every day. You're forever, and my heart will always sing. I'll give you my, yes, Lord. Best praise. That's it right there. Put your hands together if you're excited about the God that you serve. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Same thing one more time. Sing it with me. Sing, Lord, you're faithful, consistent in every way. Brand new mercies you give to me every day. You're forever. Uh, yes, Lord. My heart will always sing. I'll give you my. I'll give you my. Yes, Lord. Best praise. When I lift my hands, I'll give you. I'll give you my best praise. When I lift my voice, I'll give you my. I'll give you my best praise. Uh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, my best friend, hallelujah, I'll give it all to you, hallelujah, uh, Jesus, you deserve it, you deserve it, hallelujah, yes, Jesus, uh, hallelujah, everything I have, I'll give it, hallelujah, yes, Lord, you deserve it, you deserve it, what's the highest praise, uh, hallelujah, Excellent performance. The single you just heard is available now, but you'll have to wait until the end of the month to get the entire album. Still ahead on Studio 5. We get messages all the time from suicidal teens, kids who've attempted suicide. See how this band and its music are saving lives, one school visit at a time. We love music here in Studio 5. Last week, we introduced you to music fans who are opening up their homes and their hearts to traveling artists, giving them some much-needed comfort on the road. The organization pulling this together is called RIFO. Its hospitality network is making it possible for groups like Reverse Order to travel the country with great music and a great message against bullying. The music of Reverse Order is what's playing in my ear. Let's begin with the name, Reverse Order. Where'd that come from? Well, when we started playing music, we had been arguing about a name for a very long time. And at the time, I was homeschooled. So I was doing math on a whiteboard. And my dad walked in, and it said Reverse Order, which has to do with multiplying fractions. And he said, that's your name. You know, stop arguing. <laughs> stick with it for this. And people liked it, so it's been with us ever since. Now, you two are brothers? Yes. Yeah. And when did you get in? Uh, I found them at a local music shop looking for a fill-in a musician as a bass player and I was in college and I was working and I was like I could do this fill-in stuff and it was a lot of fun and then I remember we had this huge show and I was playing it and I left the venue and they're like hey you're in the band and I was like I'm in the band. <laughs> you end up on America's Got Talent? We literally didn't even audition for the show. A producer from NBC like emailed me and asked me to submit one of our YouTube videos and they basically just like pushed us through. We were there training for nine days and then we were right into the semifinals automatically and we got to play on TV and we didn't get X'd or anything like that and it was 
you know, yeah. the biggest thing that ever happened to us. You guys are touring now and visiting high schools. Why? Why? After we were on America's Got Talent, we had partnered with a company called High School Nation, and they were just putting us as regular concerts in high schools across the country. And while we were in the schools, we had a lot of students who would come up to us and talk to us about different problems they were having. They would message us online afterwards, and we realized that it was all the same problems we had gone through in high school. So we created the program, Reverse the Trend, and we had just done it here and there, maybe a handful of times in a year in Pennsylvania and New York. And a company found out about us and said, hey, do you want to do this for nine months? And we said, yeah, definitely sign us up. So that's where we are today. How desperate are kids uh, in the schools you're traveling and those that are communicating with you? Kids seem to go through a lot today versus when I was growing up. Uh, we get messages all the time from suicidal teens, kids who've attempted suicide or struggling with depression and anxiety. So we always leave all our social media open for them to contact us. We say that at every show at the very end, you know, if you don't feel comfortable talking to your teacher or a parent, you know, feel free to reach us on Facebook, on our website. So we like to, to keep that open so we can try to help outside of the school as well. Do you feel this is your calling? Like you were called and meant to be doing this? I would say you don't end up doing this without some sort of calling, you know, yeah, especially since it wasn't the plan. It was, we were just kind of doing it small as a local thing. And out of nowhere, this company signed us up for, you know, 270 shows our first year. It's nice to see what's happened for you. But was this the dream for you? I imagine it wasn't. The dream is to play music. And obviously, like any band, we want to be selling out international tours and we have, want to have all those charting record sales, which this, I believe, doesn't take away from that. What's been the biggest sign of success so far? America's Got Talent was a great experience. Uh, last December, we did a two-week tour in Russia, which was a ton of fun. Uh, the nonprofit in itself is a huge success, especially since, you know, it, it wasn't even like planned. We just, it just kind of happened, and it was, it's all been great. Now, one of the things that brings you here, you guys are here in Virginia, uh, is an organization that helps musicians like yourselves in terms of finding comfort on the road. How difficult is it when you're talking about traveling? Well, it can be difficult, but different programs like RIFO are really helpful. We've stayed at people's houses all over the country. We have, I just say, like, we have friends everywhere. They're like, like, even when I'm talking to my friends at home, they're like, you go to St. Louis all the time. I was like, yeah, I have friends everywhere now. <laughs> and it's just amazing. It's, you know, just the level of comfort and just being in, like, the same place, even for a day, not being in a hotel room with, like, three to five other people is just nice. We would be staying in a lot more small hotel rooms, eating a lot worse food yeah. if it wasn't for people opening their homes and, and allowing us to stay there and, and taking care of us. So it's also, it's a really great help and a lot of the people are also there for you emotionally, which you don't get from the desk clerk at a hotel. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely a much better experience. Yeah, it can just get really monotonous too. Like every hotel room looks the same and driving and you're just sitting and looking at the road a lot of time. Like even one day with a group of people who genuinely care about you just kind of like pushes the reset button. Mm -hmm. You could go for like another month. I imagine because you are uh, Christians, uh, although you're not a Christian band, yeah. You, yeah. you're still worried about content. It's obviously we're a band of three guys. We have songs about girls. You know, we have those songs. We can't get away from it. But we also have songs that deal with a lot of serious issues. Um, we have a song for the nonprofit called Not Alone, which deals with overcoming uh, bullying. And it's like a, a suicide prevention kind of song telling people that they're not alone. You know, things are going to happen. You're not alone in what you're doing. You know, life is beautiful and things are going to get better. So we have that. And then a lot of songs that just deal with general personal struggles, you know. Before I let you go, recording in the future, are we looking forward to something? Yes. We just released a new EP called Nothing to Hide that we had recorded with Matt Squire out in L.A. over the summer. And we're really, really excited about it. We have three brand new songs on it that we think are definitely our best material yet. Still ahead on Studio 5. Prince's family members are in a court battle over his estate, but fans are mourning the loss and remembering the music. We're at Paisley Park for the final word. Here's a sneak peek at what we're working on for the next week of Studio 5. It is a show that is taking us straight to Hollywood. I finished.
A humorous song about student debt sent his music career soaring. D1 gets real with Studio 5 about sexual purity. You have other people who say, well, I am not having sex at all outside of marriage. But that doesn't mean that I don't watch porn. That doesn't mean that masturbation isn't a part of my life. You know, once again, what are you, who are you comparing yourself to? Watch for more from D1 in the next episode of Studio 5. He is a wise and insightful young man. For now, I want to give the final word to fans of music icon Prince. There are still more questions and answers surrounding his death, but we do know he was an amazing talent and those fans adored him. Studio 5 paid a visit to his Paisley Park home in Minnesota, and we spoke to fans who traveled hundreds of miles to pay their respects. To come by uh, Paisley Park and see this tribute is really tremendous. I'm an 80s person, you know, grew up with the 80s music, and there's, there's not any other person I can think of with more influence on, on the 80s sound. Everything post Prince had his stamp on it. It really hit me hard when I heard the news, so I felt compelled to at least come out and pay my respects and kind of say my own goodbye. With somebody who came so far in their career and, and did so much for everybody, you know, it's the least we could do as, as simple fans, you know, to, to kind of show what uh, we could give back to him for all that he gave to us. I brought my authentic 1984 Purple Rain album. That song just does something to me. I mean, the, the first time that he gets into, you know, the chorus, it just, I get chills every single time. He explained that Let's Go Crazy was God and that the elevator bringing him down was Satan. So he always had that mix of, you know, spirituality and it touched everyone. Today it's, it's actually raining. So what a, you know, symbolism of um, what, you know, what Prince is all about. And Purple Rain is was one of my songs that I really loved. Very moving to see uh, what Prince meant to uh, his fans and to the world. When he played his show, you know, he spoke of God and the Love Sexy album and what it meant to him and it changed my life. He'll be missed for sure. The time flies. That is all for today on Studio 5. Until next time, reach out and touch me at Ephraim Graham on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And then come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next time.